playing their fiddles as Rome burns. So-called progressives, many of them loudly cheering, of course, the criminal charges against former President Trump this week. Just meanwhile, as some of the blue cities that they dominate politically at the same time, sliding further into criminal chaos. Sort of an interesting juxtaposition there. Will they ever snap out of this? Or is high crime just a price they're willing to pay for supposedly enlightened governance? Good evening, everyone. I'm Guy Benson, in for Kennedy, who is on assignment tonight. For years, we've been talking about this descent into lawlessness, and in Chicago specifically, many have blamed the city's recent crisis on Mayor Lori Lightfoot's failures. Not wrong. Voters decisively booted her out. But last night, Chicago elected a new mayor. Did they vote in the law and order candidate? No. Just the opposite. They narrowly elected a hardcore leftist, a paid teachers union agitator who supported all the COVID shutdowns, who is more radical than Lightfoot. He had all the leftists come in for him. Let's go, Brandon. And apparently the people of Chicago agreed. His name, Brandon Johnson. Oh, boy, Randy Weingarten was a fan, Bernie Sanders, Al Sharpton, and the people of Chicago, just a narrow majority, but that's what counts. Last night, after he won, Johnson laid out what he calls a strategy for making the city safer. Hmm, watch this. A city that's truly safer for everyone by investing in what actually works to prevent crime. And that means youth employment, mental health centers, ensuring that law enforcement has the resources to solve and prevent crime. Okay, a couple problems with that. Among them, Johnson has played the defund the police game. He's talked about it. He tried to distance himself from his own words, but that's what he's about. Cops in the city, understandably, don't trust him. In fact, the police union warned that if he was elected, which he now has been, thousands of officers might leave the force, either quitting or retiring early. It's exactly what Chicago needs now, right? But the Windy City isn't the only place facing these headwinds. In uber-progressive San Francisco, a beloved tech executive's father of two stabbed to death on the street last night. Bob Lee founded Cash App and worked for several other Silicon Valley startups. Elon Musk weighing in, tweeting, very sorry to hear that. Many people I know have been severely assaulted. Violent crime in SF is horrific, and even if attackers are caught, they are often released immediately. Is the city taking stronger action to incarcerate repeat violent offenders? And he tagged the mayor of San Francisco on that question. Of course, the insanity doesn't end there. Not on one coast, not in the Midwest, not out on the left coast, but also in Texas, Austin specifically, where a leader of a prominent anti-police activism coalition has just recently suggested that nobody should go to prison, ever, not even murderers. Maybe he should run for mayor of Chicago. Let's break it all down with the party panel. Conservative strategist and Z Labs vice president Chris Barron is here, as is former State Department deputy spokesperson and Fox News contributor Marie Harf, and Versus Media podcast host, Spectator USA contributing editor Stephen L. Miller. Chris, let's start with you. I know sometimes there's this impulse among conservatives to see this type of thing happen in a place like Chicago and say, you know what, go for it. You get what you vote for, enjoy. But on the other hand, there are lots of people who live in that city, innocent people, some of whom had no role in this election, children come to mind, for example, who have to deal with the schools, who have to you know, deal with the violence. Is the you got what you vote for good enough here? No, I, I don't think it is. And look, I, I have that impulse. I mean, look, I live in the middle of nowhere on top of a mountain on the Virginia, West Virginia border. Like part of me just wants to throw my arms up and say, like, hey, Chicago, San Francisco, New York, eh, you get what you vote for. But the reality is, is that there are millions of Americans in these cities who deserve to be protected. Uh, and, and, and my question would be is every time one of these progressive candidates wins in some major urban area. It reminds me of one of these like youthful communists who just says the problem is it's never been done right before because everything they talk about has been tried in other cities, sometimes even their own cities and continued to fail. What will make it different for Brandon Johnson in Chicago as opposed to any other left-wing mayor in any other major urban hellhole all across the country whose policies have been abject failures by any objective standard. Why is his approach to those exact same policies 
going to have any better outcome. Well, and that's part of the mystery here, at least for me, Marie. You're a Democrat. I'm not. I can understand why voters might say, OK, Lori Lightfoot, you had your chance. It didn't go well. We want to change direction here. Fine. I mean, I probably would have said the same thing if I were still living in Chicago. But I don't really get being <laughs> in the headspace of shifting from Lori Lightfoot to this guy. Like, can you explain that or illuminate this for <laughs> us a little bit? Well, I think this was a pretty specific election, and his opponent uh, was hurt by attacks about how he had many supporters who were supporters also of Donald Trump. So this was a very specific election. But generally speaking, Guy, crime is a problem in our cities. It has gone up in places that are governed by Democrats. It's gone up in places that are governed by Republicans. The states with the highest per capita murder rate across this country are uniformly, by a long way, led by Republicans. So the challenge, the reason I bring that up isn't for political reasons, but the challenge is we actually aren't entirely clear what policies have led to this inf influx of crime. You know, some people think it's these more liberal prosecutors or DAs who, who let criminals back on the streets, but it's also going up in cities where that's not the policy, right? So I think part of the challenge here, Guy, is that these mayors have to respond to voters. You're right. And if this mayor, if Brandon Johnson doesn't do a good job, he'll get voted out of office, right? But there's not a playbook that you could give to Brandon Johnson that's, okay, if you do X, Y, and Z, crime will go down in your city. Because we hear about these horrific cases in New York, Chicago, San Francisco, but there are really horrific crimes happening across our country in places yeah. that don't have these liberal policies. Well, that's what's so hard about this. Yeah, guy. and it, some of it is complicated, Stephen. Some of it seems less complicated. And a lot of the red state violence and crime does occur in blue cities run by Democrats, of course. But, you know, we talked about San Francisco in the open, and you have the governor in the state of California not there dealing with the problem in his state. He's like on a tour around the country of red states to lecture them about how they need to be more like California. Yeah, yeah. there's nothing less than Gavin Newsom wants to talk about than the state of his own state. Uh, when Bob Lee, the, the founder of Cash App, was stabbed to death, uh, Gavin Newsom lifted his travel expense ban on red states so he could fly government tax dollars to Sarasota, Florida, uh, to highlight uh, Ron DeSantis turning a college into uh, a bastion of right-wing thought. Uh, two days ago, he just slammed Tennessee for a mass shooting by someone, by all means, is not a conservative, and targeted Christians at a school. And this is Gavin Newsom basically attempting to raise his profile for either this coming election cycle or a next one. And like I said, this is a guy who doesn't pay attention to anything happening in his own state. And yeah, there's a reason he why. Spends a lot of his time tweeting and talking about other states. One of them is Texas. I mentioned the Austin story. This crazy activist in Austin actually gave an interview to the New York Post saying if a grandmother, his own grandmother, had been murdered with a shotgun blast to the face, he would feel sad about it, but that person shouldn't go to prison because there's nothing to be gained from that. Uh, my guess is that probably wouldn't play overall in the state of Texas, uh, not these days at least.